So I'm here um, having a quick chat with um, Christina Ruloff. She's the film director behind a short documentary called Oliver and I, um, which has been nominated at our uh, Fusion Film Festival in Brussels the next month. Congratulations, Christina. Thank you for taking the time to join us. Thank you. Um, just for those that don't know, and I had to do some research on this, Oliver of I um, is considered by Western art historians and collectors to be one of the most important 20th century artists of the Yoruba region of what is today Nigeria, Africa. He was a wood sculptor and master innovator in the African style of design known as Oju Ona. And it sounds like I know what I'm talking about, but I'm reading that directly from Wikipedia. Um, I've seen the film a couple of times, so perhaps you could tell us, um, Christina, I, I've obviously got your bio on here, but if you could um, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself, that would be wonderful, and then we can get into the film. All right. Uh, I'm actually a uh, trained historian, so I have a history background, and... Years and years ago, it sounds like it, I was asked by my professor at uni to do some e-learning videos. Mm. And when I actually found out, well, you know, I know quite a bit about history, but not so much about videos. Right. Uh, the longer I, you know, worked there, the more I felt like, A, I really want to do film, and B, I need to go somewhere and actually, you know, get a proper education. So I first went to Denmark to the European Film College to do some sort of pre-class, pre-course. Yeah. And I thought, you know, uh, the European Film College is like in the middle of nowhere in Jutland. And I thought, if I manage eight and a half months there, <laughs> and I still really love it, then it's the right thing. And yeah, it was a wonderful time. So I decided to go to London and, you know, I applied to the London Film School. I get accepted and there I studied. Okay. So yeah, came back to Switzerland. I have my own little company and I still make films. So are, are you first and foremost someone that's more interested in as a in as a historian or filmmaking? Was that a bit unfair? Is it a case of you just love the blend of both? Ah. Uh, I think <laughs> the longer the more I would say I love both, but I'm, I'm actually at heart more a filmmaker than a historian. I think history is absolutely fascinating and exciting, and I think the background really helps me to, you know, do research and dive into a subject. But at the end of the day, I think I'm a filmmaker. Thank you. And what? How did you come? Because honestly, I didn't know about Holloway and. and I, I said this film is about him, which it kind of is, but really, um, it's uh, more, I think, or equally as much about Jean David, the historian, um, or the dealer, I should say, or perhaps that's me, my opinion, but it's kind of a, I suppose, a juxtaposition on, on both, and I, I kind of thought it was more about his take on spotting forgeries and fakes and, and, and cutting, getting the, the wheat from the chaff, as we would say, but... Um, is that a fair assessment? Is it? A, would you say it's more about him than the actual artist, the artist himself? Well, it is called a little bit, and I, and I is clearly Jean. Yes. So I think, you know, the fact is, as you said, you read it from Wikipedia, and you know, there is no need to be ashamed of that because if you googled more, there is very, very, very little information on a little bit itself. There is just people actually, and I think that's also something I hope. You know, we show in the film, people know, sadly, unfortunately, very little about the historic figure. Mm. Therefore, it is important that you have somebody who, you know, takes you by the hand and shows you what he knows after years and years of, you know, living and with this art and living for this art. And therefore, it is as much, I would say, about Jean than it is about really Lobe. It is, I would say, about his passion for this artist and why he thinks this is a wonderful and great you know master and he should be more you know known <laughs> universally than just you know for specialists and geeks and lovers of African art because it is amazing I think what he does <coughs> yeah I've started seeing the film his work, his work is beautiful it's very interesting how um, David talks about trying to spot the fakes and how difficult it is and as so you know you made the film but 
it was uh, when he talks about you know it's easy to see with the ones that are terrible, but obviously um, that's not always the case. Uh, and it's, it's I guess as he becomes more well known, then I'm assuming more and more people will start to fake his work. How did you said? So how did you know about Alloway? Did you know about him before you made this film? Where, where's the connection here? Not at all. Um, a friend of you know mine introduced me years ago. Again, years meaning I think four or five years ago to Jean. Mm. And he just said, "Oh, let's let's you know. I know this guy <laughs> who runs uh, who has this African art shop. Uh, let's go and have a chat with him." And you know, I entered this shop at the time. It was still in Zurich, and it was like entering a different world. It was absolutely fascinating. And I was there, and I looked around, and there was so much to discover. Yet I hardly understood anything. You know, with European art, we kind of have a background, and we manage to, you know, understand what's going on, more or less. Mm. Can... But there, I was just puzzled, and I didn't know anything. So I had a chat with Jean, and he started to explain things, and he kind of, you know, introduced me to what was there. And little by little, you know, over the months, I always kind of, you know, came back to the shop, and if he, when he had time, he would just have a chat with me and, you know, explain more things and introduce me to more objects. And at some point, I said, you know... <laughs> For me, this is a luxury. I can just go there and have a chat. But what about other people? How about we could make a film, you and I? And he was like, oh, that's a brilliant idea, but the timing is so bad. You know, the usual excuse, you yeah. would say. <laughs> but, you know, I just kept going there and friendly nudging him. And at some point in time, he was like, mm, mm, yeah, let's do it. So, yeah. And then he said, you know, I, I don't have a lot of time, obviously, but we can have a long weekend and you can come and film whatever you like and ask me whatever you like and hang around as much as you like. And that's how this film got made. And it's quite interesting because I've interviewed loads of filmmakers, loads of documentary filmmakers, and um, the thing that intrigues me is always the research. Um, you know, I'll give you an example of... Uh, it doesn't matter what the film is, but I remember talking to a filmmaker, a couple that stick in my mind actually. One is um, an Argentinian filmmaker, and he he's, the research for that film is an hour long, took him two to three years, and there was a, um, um, an, uh, an, an American Israeli filmmaker that I spoke to a few years ago, and he took him 15 to 20 years to make the film, would you believe? Uh, and he actually, I'm sorry, he made the film over a period of 15, 20 years, starting with 8mm and actually graduating up to um, um, digital obviously digital photography, but the research, again, involved in his film was huge. And I guess you kind of let the cat out of the bag because you've already explained there's very little known about Holloway. So I'm guessing that Jean was the go-to guy for pretty much all of your research. Um, yes and no. Okay. I mean, uh, etc. cetera. He has a lot of expertise, obviously, but I also, you know, went out and tried to do my own research. But, you know, it really is the case. In the end, I ended up at his, uh, you know, his shop, I would say, because he has a huge library and he actually has the books. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, I, I think that's just one of the things, you know, he, he was also a bit frustrated about. And I think that's where the forgery plays in or plays a big part, as there is little known, there is just not so much right or wrong it is really a lot about gut feeling about finding things out about talking to people talking to people if you can in Africa and doing the sort of oral history thing rather than really you know reading tons of books etc yeah and uh, you know the film is called Alove and I because you know I didn't have the means to go to Africa or anything for me it was more I could go to Jean and he had this way of pulling me in and having this uh, you know, this passion and I wanted to share a bit of this passion with the audience so that they you know, could on their own go on a you know, discovery tour whenever they liked, so they could see I, you know, I think, like always always to open little windows yeah. so that you can you know, look in and say, oh I actually like this I want to know more, or nice to be there but thank you I mean, I, I know you, you, thank you for that, alluded to earlier, I'm, I'm it's a bit of a silly thing to ask, but um, you need to be kind of interested in something to do something. But I think if you open windows, most people, you know, are 
ready to actually fall in love with something new. Yes. It's just we're, you know, most of the time stuck in our everyday life in our little boxes and we have what we know and basically going out and discovering is a tiring business. We all know that. <laughs> it takes time and energy, etc., etc. So, you know, if I uh, have the luxury or the passion as a filmmaker to do that and if I'm able to share some of that, then, you know, I'm very happy. That's all I really want. And how, how different was it making this your previous films? I believe that this was your first documentary. I've looked again at your bio and they their narratives is that is that it was this your first stab at a um at a documentary film yeah it was the first one uh you know uh, it was very different because uh me coming from fiction i, I you know when i first showed up at you know with my uh, good friend james who helped me with the film he's, he also studied at the london film school he came over to switzerland uh, I had really, you know, I had it all planned out. We would do this, we would do that, and then the camera would go there. And it's obviously nonsense. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> so after the first evening, I was just sitting there and I was like, what the hell am I going to do? And at the same time, it was super exciting because that's really, I think, how a documentary should be. You, you do all your planning and your preps, but then you turn up on the day and this is real life people don't react like you expect them to do. Uh, I had, you know, I, I said I studied history, but I also studied what we call uh, in Switzerland film science, film studies, mm. as a minor, and there I had actually read a lot about the theory of documentary, and suddenly, you know, I had read about it, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's interesting and all of that, but suddenly I was in the midst of it, and I suddenly understood what these people meant with, you know, reality taking over, and you can't plan it and then people react like this in unexpected ways or they react how you expect them so yeah it was very very um, exciting tiring <laughs> exhausting but I wouldn't you know I wouldn't miss it for the world because I learned so much just by doing it and by yeah being there and doing this film and trying to get the best shots I could and trying to get what I could out of Jean and can you can you explain a little bit more about film science? Because, again, a lot of filmmakers I speak to won't have gone through that, um, particularly the ones that have decided to... And this happens a lot, by the way. I've spoken to lots of filmmakers that have, have taken on... have had a career change later on in life. They might have been genuinely like solicitors and doctors and dentists. And um, I, I really have interviewed lots of them that have, have had this career change. So I wouldn't have gone through that. But it would be interesting to know what purely film science really means because it may be something that not many of them have come across I studied, I said you know, I focus on medieval history on history of uh, economics and as my second minor um, I had film studies or film science and the idea really is that you, you know on one hand you analyse films as in you analyze how are they shot, how are they, they constructed, what about the frames, etc., etc. On the other side, it's really very, um, I would say, more on a philosophical level. It was not just, it was just not something for me. Mm. Because it was, I've often read these texts, and you know, at the time I was a very, well, very, well, you don't see me in brackets, I was a very good student, as in I would really do all the homework and all of that sort of thing. But, <laughs> Jesus Christ, most of these texts had very, very little to do with the film I'd watched. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just, yeah, it was just like, why you people don't try and go out and actually make a film rather than have these wild theories that, yeah, are so, what seemed to me, touch wood, it's just my personal opinion, they seemed so divorced from the reality of the film. Or they just pointed out plain obvious things. So as you can see, that's, that was why it was my second minor, because I pretty soon found out, oh God, that's really not for me, at least. And I need to focus on something that's more, I would say, scientific. Because, you know, with history, you can, you know, you have sources, you read them, you analyze them, there is something there, it's not just thoughts, ideas, and, you know, maybe probably, you know, loads of people think the same about history, but, well, never mind. So the film is 15 minutes long, um, or around 15 minutes long, um, and I'm always interested to know <clears throat> why a filmmaker would take make a particular film length. Did it just fall naturally like that? I'm sure it didn't. Um, or 
you know, what what was the process for arriving at film? Because I'm sure you've got loads of unused footage, but what was the process you arrived at to make it just that length of time? <sighs> okay, there is different um, angles of this. On one hand, you know, I have lots of more material, obviously, of chatting with John. And the question was just, what is it I really want to focus on? Mm. And, you know, there is stuff I, I would have liked to use, you know, it's always, what, what do they say, kill your darlings? There is stuff I thought would be lovely. <laughs> oh. uh, but at the end, I thought it would just, you know, take the focus away on the things I cared about most. So I really cared about, you know, showing how much he cared. I cared about showing uh, that, you know, there is, as I said, there is the whole forgery business. I wanted to show a bit how the art, African art, you know, um, business works, how to buy stuff. Yeah. Because that was really interesting. Particularly, I, I absolutely love, some people say it was too long, but I love the, the video footage he gave me of buying something. Why? You know, <laughs> because that's so beyond anything we, you know, imagine how things work. Um, yeah, I think it, in the end it fell naturally more or less plus minus 30 seconds to what I thought is really important. And if people wanted more, yeah, well, that's a good sign, isn't it?